In this demonstration, we're going to talk about block apps and specifically the block product. Now, there's some dependencies here. We need to install a couple things in order to actually use block, so we'll walk through what's that mean. But you can think of block as kind of an SDK to talk to a blockchain. Now, this talks to a specific type of blockchain, and that blockchain being Strato. So Block Apps has created a unique blockchain offering called Strato, and the kind of the difference or the unique characteristic of it is that typical blockchains like we've been looking at with Ethereum actually use uh, JSON RPC as a protocol to actually talk to the blockchain for, you know, for instance, for entering transactions on the blockchain. Uh, Block Apps took a unique approach to this and said, could we stand up and build a REST API in front of a blockchain that essentially allows developers who already have experience with web services and enterprise development experience to be able to easily grasp this technology and start using it. And so you don't have to learn a new protocol or any of that kind of thing when you're using this product. So what we'll do first is lay down that product and then we'll talk about Block, which sits on top of it, that enables, enables us to create applications on top of that. So the first thing we need to do is come into the portal and actually provision an instance of Strato and you just come up here to the top where it says new. You click on that guy and you type in Strato and I'll go ahead and zoom in here and you can you can actually type blockchain or Strato or whatever. It'll come up like this so you can see that we have that Strato thing there and we'll go ahead and, and hit enter on that and then we'll get the results and here it is. And we'll go ahead and expand that. And basically, this just describes uh, what the what the instance does for you and how to use it. And then it also has links to their developer API documentation and examples and whatnot. And if you want to go ahead and spin one of these up, all you have to do is click on this little create thing down here in the bottom right corner or left corner, and fill in the parameters like what machine name you want to use, what usernames you want to use, and and what size you want. Uh, once you have all that spinning up, and I've already done this, you'll have a machine just like this um, that's running in your account. And um, it's a Linux Ubuntu box, uh, has all the Strato bits already pre-installed on it. And the only thing you really need is this public IP address. Um, so you'll take note of that because we'll use that in our configuration file later. Great, so once we have that all stood up, the next piece we need is actual block that we've been talking about. So block is a is a node-based application. So you can come up to the NPM repository and look for block apps dash block. Uh, go ahead and it has uh, some documentation about how to use it. We're going to walk through some of these demos now, but to actually install it, you basically just do a global install of block apps. And the last piece you would do then is go into wherever you want to create your project at and run block init. Now it'll prompt you, it'll ask you for a couple parameters, like what do you want to name your application, and what's your Strato endpoint, like your IP address we mentioned before. And other than that, uh, it'll go ahead and scaffold out a project for you. Now again, in the interest of time, I've already set that up. And so I have one called MVA Demo here, and it's empty. So this is what a base app looks like. In my config YAML, I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. You can see there's an API URL here that basically points to my Strato endpoint. And so remember my IP address there, yours is going to vary, so that's what you would enter there. Now, once we have all that uh, configured, um, that's really all we need to do. Uh, I want to show you a couple things around here. So in the app folder, there's a lot of code here that actually is infrastructure to make this work, but one thing that's kind of cool is we have this contracts uh, directory here that has a bunch of smart contracts in it. Now these smart contracts are written in Solidity, and uh, these are just some examples of multi-contract, uh, multi-signatures, simple storage, so just some starter applications to kind of get you going, smart contracts. And uh, we'll come back to that in a second when we actually want to go ahead and start creating some smart contracts on the blockchain, but the first thing we want to do is actually create some accounts. So we're going to pop over to a command line, and all we need to do is just run block gen key. Now if I put new parameters in there, it's basically going to create me an account for admin. Um, doesn't have any special permissions, it's just an account, and it just happens to be called admin. We'll go ahead and put a password in here, and you'll see that it wrote a file out here. Now, uh, you'll see this long string of alphanumeric characters here, .json, and if you actually pop out here um, to, your, to your IDE, you'll see that there's a new folder here called users, and I'll go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see. You can see there's a users folder now, and the admin's in it, and you can see a long string of alphanumeric characters again. So if we click on that, uh, basically, this is all the uh, salt values and the encryption. It actually has a, 
an encrypted version of the private key here. It has the address of where this thing lives on the blockchain. So all the stuff that makes up those those key pairs that you generated there on your client. Now the address you can see is right here. Um, so it starts with 011A, and you can see this starts with 011A. So in fact, the name of the file is the address on the blockchain. So now we have an account out there, that's cool. If we wanted to create other ones, I mean, we could just say block gen key uh, test user, let's say. And again, we're going to be asked to enter a password of high entropy, and I'm going to use the really strong one of test right now. And basically, you can see that one got mined as well, so we created an external account, essentially, on that blockchain, and here's the address for that. And again, if we pop back over here into the users folder, you can see we now have admin and test user. So super simple to create accounts. Um, I don't know how it could get any simpler there. When you start working you know, with blockchains, one of the first things you run into here is generating key pairs and external accounts and unlocking and all this different uh, features you have to do just to actually start to interface with it. So the team here has done a great job to make that really easy to actually start interfacing with. Now, that's cool that we've created those uh, external accounts, but we actually want to create some some contracts, some smart contracts on this chain. And I'm going to walk through one of the really simple ones, which is the uh, simple storage. Now I'm going to walk through this function. This is the actual smart contract, uh, Solidity code. It looks like JavaScript, um, so it's got a lot of the same features. And you can also see that basically we have a state variable here that we're going to keep in our contract that's going to store a uint, and then we have a setter and a getter here. Obviously, the setter is going to accept a parameter that's going to use to, to uh, update that stored data, and then getter actually returns that data. What happens is we compile this locally into bytecode, and then we turn around and sign that and put that as a transaction on the blockchain, and then the contract can live in the blockchain once it's mined. Then users can come along if they know what that address is and execute the code inside of the smart contract. Now, the way that they would do that is create a transaction and pass in parameters. How do they know what parameters to pass in? There's a, there's a simple format that gets created when we compile this called ABI. So the ABI actually lays out like the interface and says we have a setter here, a set function, that accepts one parameter that's a uint and doesn't return anything. And then we have a get uh, function that doesn't accept any parameters but does return a uint. Um, so that's kind of like an interface uh, description of what's happening there. So again, back to our command line. If we do a block compile, simple storage, and we don't have to put the uh, the extension on there of .sol. What should happen here is uh, we do a local compilation of that, so you can see the source code there, and then it actually uh, wrote out uh, to this meta folder. So if we come back out here again, look in our meta folder, you'll see we have our simple storage.json, and there's the actual binary, um, and here's the ABI that I was mentioning before. Um, so you can take a look at that at your leisure, but basically it's describing what's happening inside of there, and there's our binary. Now, that's just local, right? So we've just compiled it locally, but we actually want to put this thing on the blockchain so we can actually use it. So one of the ways we would do that is we would just do block upload, simple storage, It's going to ask us for a password. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And you'll see that we actually created uh, the simple storage up in the blockchain. And you can see there's the address it actually lives at now. Uh, if we pop back out to uh, this interface, you can see that we now have a couple documents describing it. We have the actual source that we have. We have the one that lives in the blockchain. And then we have the latest. Um, because we could actually rev this, right? So as we create more versions of this thing, each time it's going to change the address. Uh, of what happens up there, uh, or what lives on the blockchain. Now, this was through the command line, but you can think of this, how would I interface with this from an application? So what I have here is Postman, uh, which is a tool that allows you to interact with REST endpoints. Now, we don't have anything listening here right now, so what we could do is just say block start. And after a few seconds, you see, uh, let me zoom in on that so you can see what exactly it says. So basically, it says block is listening on port 8000, and then at the bottom, API is pointed to, and then it has our API endpoint. So cool stuff. We have a little listener now running here. And over here, then, we could start to make some REST calls. So let's just say we go to localhost, port 8000, slash users. 
So what this is going to do is basically enumerate the users that we have on our local instance here. And in our case, we have admin and test user. Now, if I forgot what the address was for admin, I could actually just type in admin there, and you would see we get the address back. And if you check that with what we have over there, you would see that it's the same thing. Now, we could also create users like we did before. Um, so again, from our code, you can imagine that we could do this in our code too. We could say demo user, right? So there is no demo user right now. But if we create one, and all we have to do in a body that's uh, URL encoded, we pass two parameters. We'll pass a password, and we'll just call this test. And then we pass a faucet, which basically allows us to give it uh, some ether, right, by default. So it's going to give some ether in order for us to execute uh, code on the blockchain. So if I click on that, you'll see basically I get an address back because it just created a new user up on the blockchain called demo user. And you saw some stuff flash by over here. You can actually see in debug in the console um, the actual REST calls coming in. So now if I come out here and do a get and say users, I should see three users. And you can see that we can actually see three users. And you can imagine that we can do this with the entire API set. So with contracts, we can manipulate upload contracts. Uh, we can do all that stuff from the REST interface, which makes a really good interface uh, when you start working with this from your application. And so uh, that's the demo on Block Apps and getting started with it. I hope it was helpful for you. The documentation's all up there on their uh, NPM page. So you can take a look at that. And you can also review this video if it helps you. Thank you.